Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to DND News. How's it going? I'm Greg Tito. It's good to see you. We are here on this fantabulous Tuesday afternoon to talk about all the things that are happening in DND &D world, uh, and there's a lot of them. So I'm going to get through them all right about now. How are you guys doing on this fine day? Oh, I can't connect to Twitch chat, which always makes me upset. You need Adobe Flash Player to use chat. Well, that doesn't make any sense since I've been using this exact same setup for so long. Uh, but anyhow, I can't see what you're saying right now, so in case you are saying something to me, I'm just going to pretend it's nice and kind and uh, that we will all have fun. Oh, hi. There you go. Thanks, Pelham. Pelham is a good person. Uh, what's up, Trick? How's it going? How are you? Good to see you, buddy. Uh, yes, it is. I was staring into the void. It's true. I, uh, oh, and I'm, 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 maybe I should move a little bit so I'm in the center. There we go. Hey, I like that. Hi. Uh, all right, so we have a lot to get through, and uh, we are getting ready for uh, Dice Camera Action, which starts at 4 p.m. Pacific time with Mr. Chris Perkins and the Waffle Crew. Uh, they have got Rachel Seeley from Girls God's Glory joining again uh, as uh, a, a, a druid in charge of a veg veg pygmy army. Uh, and I'm blanking her name. Was it Miranda? It was Miranda. That's right, Miranda. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, they've got a lot of uh, things going on. Uh, and so does Chris Perkins. He was just at PAX South uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago. Uh, and you can check out the video for that game at twitch.tv slash PAX. Uh, it's in the videos there. Uh, they went through a lot of what's going on in the lost city of Omu. And I've had some discussion back and forth today on Twitter about spoiling of certain adventures. So if you don't want to know what happens at the end of Tomb of Annihilation, perhaps you might want to skip that Acquisitions Incorporated video. I understand a lot of people who are playing through it don't necessarily want to get stuff away. Totally understand that. Uh, it's hard for us to talk about stories and stuff without spoiling some things, but in this case, uh, perhaps a spoiler warning is in, in order. I totally understand uh, where, where that's coming from. But if you're just excited about experiencing that story, Tomb of Annihilation, and your uh, game is not currently doing it, that's a great way to experience that story. So go check it out. D&D &D Beyond is now, uh, in addition to letting you make characters with all of the 5th edition rules that are currently available, they worked really hard at getting Xanathar's Guide to Everything ready at launch. Tons of subclasses in there. Those subclasses were tested on a little column series we called Unearthed Arcana, in which Jeremy Crawford and Mike Merles, uh, as well as some other members of the team, sometimes put up playtest material for you to test out, make sure it works, get some feedback on it, and they use that information to um, you know, curtail exactly what's going to be in the books themselves. So they're starting that off with 2018. 20, that's the that's the date today. Uh, with an awesome, uh, where did I find? Oh darn it! I put it on here. Is it not in there? I printed it out and everything. Darn it! Um, Unearth Arcana this year, this month had three new subclasses. One of them was a fighter archetype. One of them was a druid uh, circle called I think Circle of the Spores, which all had to do with. Uh, uh, mushrooms, and the like. You can now play with that material directly in D&D &D Beyond. Yes, that's right. You can make characters using the subclass material that is in there. Uh, we're going to release that on D&D, &D, well, actually, Curse is releasing that on D&D &D Beyond a week after we publish the articles here on the website and on Dragon Plus. Uh, so uh, it, it's a bit of a delay before you get it, but at the same time, you'll be able to work with the characters, uh, the character builder in D&D &D Beyond and use that material. It'll go away eventually. It'll sunset. Uh, but uh, it, and, and it will hopefully become more official material if people like what they're doing. But this will allow you to test it out a little bit easier. So go check that out. Go to D&D Beyond. We have a couple of videos with uh, Merles and Crawford talking about what those subclasses and what they were all about for on the Arctic Arcana. Um, some really cool news that's been coming out. Oh, hey, I wanted to make sure I say hi to you guys. Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, hi. Fighter the Brute. Yes, it was the Brute trick. Thank you for that. I printed it out so I would have those references in front of me and I left them on the printer. I'm a smart person. Uh, maybe Trick, can you go get those and bring them down to the studio for me? <laughs> Dang it. I said that and now he's probably going to do it because he's a nice guy. Uh, anyway, for those of you guys who don't know, this is Trick uh, from the Magic Community team. Great guy. Uh, and uh, the uh, other stuff I wanted to talk to you about is uh, the... Uh, Columbus Dispatch did an awesome article about Dungeons and & Dragons and the rise of it, the growing popularity. Uh, there, there's a quote there that said, boosted by pop culture references, such as Stranger Things. Uh, a variety of live stream games and a new, more accessible set of rules, Dungeons & Dragons has morphed from geek to chic. 
uh, and I pronounced that correctly so that it would rhyme. So good on the author writing that up. Uh, he spoke with Merles about one of the reasons why, uh, uh, or, or, or uh, getting his sense on why he thought the D&D uh, &D is, is booming right now. Uh, it's a really cool article. Uh, we're going to post a link to it in the chat so you guys can check it out yourselves. And I think we actually have a, a, a picture, an image of what the, uh, the headline actually looks like too. Uh, there you go. Okay, it already went up. There you go. There you go. Check it out. Uh, it's good stuff. Uh, and uh, I like that it was in Columbus because that's where we do uh, Origins uh, Game Fair is in Columbus. I've never actually been there myself. I've heard really good things and there's a lot of great um, things we've got planned for this year uh, in Origins. It's a little bit earlier this year, of, I believe. I think it's like the 14th through the 17th. Uh, so if you're in the Columbus, Ohio area or in Ohio in general, uh, go check it out. And then you'll see some, some members of the D&D team there. Uh, another cool article that came out uh, is from our friends at Game Informer, uh, which is usually more video game based, but there is an author there who is a huge fan of board games and tabletop games and RPGs in general, and uh, uh, he shared a list of the most anticipated tabletop games of 2018, and on that list is my friend Shelley's game that she's working on with uh, another friend of mine, Rob Daviau, uh, who is making Betrayal Legacy. That's right. We announced it last uh, fall uh, during PAX Unplugged, but Betrayal Legacy takes the Betrayal on the Hill, uh, on the Hill, on the house, no, not on, at, these prepositions, man, they're really hard, Betrayal at House on the Hill. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, that's a horror-themed, uh, horror pulp adventure-themed uh, board game in which you explore a mansion, you put down tiles uh, individually, and you kind of explore. It's a new, it's a different time, e a different experience each time. There's 50 haunts uh, that trigger and tell a different story each time you play. Uh, we released Widow's Walk, an expansion to uh, that game uh, just recently, in the last two years, uh, and that added 50 new haunts. So there's tons of gameplay. We're building on that. There was also Betrayal at Baldur's Gate, which was a D&D themed version of that game. Uh, and for this year, we're making Betrayal Legacy, taking all the legacy games that Rob Davio pioneered uh, here at Hasbro, actually, uh, for Risk Legacy. Uh, that was a game I played tons about five or six years ago when it came out. Kind of blew my mind off on what video, uh, what board games could do. And he's expanded on that idea a couple of times. You might have played Pandemic Legacy. It was very popular. Still is very popular with all the seasons. He had his game Seafall, which was uh, more of an Age of Exploration uh, use of uh, the legacy legacy thing in which you put stickers down, rip up cards. The game that you're playing is never the same uh, due to what the, the choices that you make while you're playing that, that board game. So all those things hold true for Betrayal Legacy. I'm super excited about the combination of uh, uh, two of my favorite things, House on the Hill and Legacy Games with Rob Davia. Rob actually worked on the original Betrayal at House on the Hill. Got it right. Um, and uh, so, so it's this great melding of minds. Uh, so I can't wait to see what that happens. And I'm really excited that Game Informer uh, cited it as one of the most anticipated games of the year because it is one of mine as well. Hopefully it'll be one of yours too. Uh, cool. Other fun stuff that is going on in Dungeons & Dragons is Kate Welch. That's right. Rosie B. Stinger from Acquisitions Incorporated, the C team, is joining the Dungeons & Dragons team as a designer. We're super excited. Uh, she tweeted it out uh, last Thursday to much fanfare, including this, in fact, tweet. You won't be able to see it animate quite yet, uh, but it has also one of my favorite characters uh, from the, the, the Mario universe uh, screaming uh, in anticipation, and it, that could have not have been more perfect for all of the excitement that we had both here in the building and amongst fans who have learned about her joining the team. She's gonna hit the ground running, help us work on some products that have yet to be announced Right out of the gate, she's starting on February 5th. It's gonna be really cool, and uh, I'd like to you know, personally welcome Kate to the team. It's gonna be lots of fun, and we will make sure to get her on things like Dragon Talk, maybe some streaming things. Obviously, she's gonna have a lot of work to do ramping up, uh, so she won't have tons of time for doing streaming, but we will get her on here, and you guys will be able to talk and meet with her a lot uh, over the course of all of 2018, which is pretty exciting, so that's good news. Thanks, Kate, welcome, can't wait. Um, and if you're not in Rosie B. Stinger cosplay the entire time you're working here, then the deal is off. Just throwing that out there. So, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention one other thing. We were talking about um, uh, uh, Rob Daviau. Uh, he made this awesome, cool tweet. Yeah, check, go ahead, check it out. He uh, made, we, we made these, uh, we made maps of the Tomb of Horrors 
uh, for last year when we did Tales from the Yanni Portal, uh, these actual physically cloth maps. And we, this is actually, and independently we had this idea too, uh, to make throw pillows out of these cloth maps and they're amazing. And uh, the tweet, I've seen this tweeted so many times, it's gone crazy, uh, the amount of people who have loved this idea. So if anyone has two or more of these, uh, actually you don't even need two, I guess you could do one face and then do cloth on the other side. Uh, it'd be really cool, but uh, I'm sure you might have some friends out there. Uh, in addition to using these cloth maps, uh, I, I, I personally use them a lot as um, uh, player artifacts. So like if you discover something in the Tomb of Horrors, you can give out this map and they can kind of see it. But if you're not running Tomb of Horrors, it doesn't really work as much. So having it as a nice throw pillow for you to snuggle up to uh, is the second best thing that you can do uh, with this cloth map. And uh, it's a nice kind of touch, kind of feels, uh, kind of feels classy. People don't know, necessarily know that you are uh, a D&D fanatic by having this throw pillow. All right, well, let's face it. You pretty much are a D&D fanatic if you have a, a, a dungeon map as your throw pillows. But I think you can kind of camouflage it and uh, uh, make it seem cool. Maybe your mom would like it or, or, your, uh, or your dad or your grandfather. Never know. Never know. It's good stuff. Um, so, yeah, I just want to kind of share that tweet with you because, again, yeah, we're doing those, uh, I think we're going to have those here on the D&D team, and I'll be uh, posting those probably on our Instagram account and other things when we do have them for reals uh, because, yeah, it's crazy that we had that idea on our own as well. So kudos to Rob, uh, and uh, I believe it was his uh, wife who helped make those, those pillows as well. So, uh, Twitch subscribe. Thank you for everyone who has subscribed to Twitch uh, here on the D&D channel. We really appreciate it. It's been great uh, seeing this community grow over the last six months, uh, seven months, I guess. It's been, it's been tons of fun, and uh, they are uh, still available if you want them. Uh, the, we were putting in new and new and better emotes uh, for the D&D channel. We're adding more. We're going to cycle out some other ones and, and cycle in some new ones. So if you have any ideas for new emotes that you can use once you subscribe to the channel, please let us know. There, a lot of them are dice camera action themed, in fact, and, you know, and we, you use them to great effect uh, when uh, the show gets started in about 20 minutes. Uh, please do. Uh, you use them very well, and they'll be doing more and more. Uh, so thank you for all the subscriptions that have come in. Uh, for those of you uh, who don't know, all Twitch had this thing that came out where each partner uh, had to have subscriptions at the uh, $4.99 level, the $9.99 level, and the $24.99 level. And uh, it kind of it came as a surprise for us. So we didn't have stuff for you guys to, to purchase at those levels. Uh, but we're working on it. We're working hard on making sure we have stuff that you what will be of value to you. Uh, pretty exciting the amount of stuff that we might be able to get to where we have a lot of irons in the fire. I can't really give any hints about what exactly those tiers will include, but just want to let you know we're working on it and uh, support, you know, continue to support us at the 499 level. If you want to give us more, that's fine, great too. You'll be grandfathered into uh, whatever we offer in those higher tiers eventually, uh, but I just want to make sure you guys were aware that we're not keeping those empty on, on purpose. We are, we are working on ways to get those filled up with more and more content from you guys. Uh, yeah, I know, right? What well, the Waffle Crew emotes is a full-time job, uh, Lauren. Totally. Uh, waffle Crew equals Waffle Zoo. Hmm. I didn't even think about that. Maybe we should start like a morning zoo show, where it's all the members of the Waffle Crew uh, doing like prank phone calls and uh, uh, fart jokes or something like that. Wait, they do that anyway. What am I talking about? <laughs> mm. Cool stuff. Well. Uh, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms is going strong. It is on Steam right now in early access. Uh, it is a game in which you can send out your party uh, on adventures. They kill monsters. They uh, collect loot all in real time. So you can walk away and uh, let them do what they're doing. Come back and there is tons of gold and XP for you to spread around to your team. You can get new heroes by participating in new events. Speaking of which, we've got a new event that I wanted to tease to you that is coming to uh, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms right now. Uh, the Codename Entertainment guys, all they provided was this image, uh, but it's pretty, pretty striking. Uh, what do you think that amulet is exactly? It is a reference to some type of D&D story? Perhaps, perhaps not. You never know. Um, it is cool stuff. Uh, so uh, get out there. If you're interested in finding more about uh, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms, they do have a live stream every week 
uh, on their own Twitch channel. It is on Thursdays at 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, they are doing that broadcasting from Victoria, British Columbia, in the land of Canada. Uh, good stuff happening there. Uh, go check out more. Plus, uh, Twitch Plays Idol Champions is also a great way to find out what is happening. That running all the time. It is its own channel. You can play Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms using chat commands in the chat. It's pretty cool stuff. I suggest you check it out if you're interested to find out more. Uh, and it's a nice way to interact with some of the D&D storylines that you've got going on. Uh, oh, and I guess I, this, this shirt isn't really being uh, visible right now. I, I did want to kind of hint at it in case you guys wanted to see it. Uh, it's good stuff, all right? Yeah, you don't need my name up there for that long. You can just kind of look at this shirt. Uh, but anyway, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, and so what... Uh, oh, yeah, uh, continuing to hint at what's going on with Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms, uh, it's called Dead Winter Day is Almost Upon Us. That's the only other bit of text they gave us. Dead Winter Day is Almost Upon Us. What do you think that means? I don't know. You're going to have to figure it out. It's cool stuff. Uh, Neverwinter is also a great video game uh, that uses the D&D license. It's uh, got a new module coming out to PC on February 27th that kind of completes the uh, Tomb of Annihilation storyline that they've been doing uh, alongside uh, what we have been putting out there. So it's a Neverwinter Lost City of Omu. It'll be out on PS4 and Xbox One a little bit later after the uh, 227 date. Uh, but look at that and it, uh, you shall play with all the storylines as you're going with the higher levels there going on. Uh, lots of great stuff. Uh, Beamdog has got some cool things going on as well, including uh, Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. This is a game that came out uh, back in the early aughts, and it is uh, kind of a high mark for uh, the way, the, the tool set that they provided to the RPG community. In fact, I was just talking on Dragon Talk yesterday uh, to uh, RPG Research as well as a bunch of other, <laughs> he's, he's got a lot of RPG, uh, I'm talking about Hawk Robinson who runs a lot of uh, RPG research as well as therapeutics, things like that. But he in fact uses the Aurora tool set in Neverwinter Nights to create modules for helping people with uh, autism who may be on the spectrum uh, or, or any other kind of um, uh, mental handicap or any kind of things that are happening uh, and using it to tell those, the stories that they want to tell and curtail the adventures to things that uh, they would uh, respond to. Uh, so it's kind of interesting that even this, this, this old game is still being used and Beamdog is updating it for today's modern operating systems as well as uh, improving the UI and things like that. Uh, so it's super exciting. They're working on it. The community is super strong. They've been using the Aurora toolset for a long, long time, uh, and uh, they are now updating it and working with the community. So if you want to find out more about that, go to the Beamdog forums. Uh, the guys there are also doing their own live stream, uh, which is also, I'm going to make sure I get it right, uh, which is on Fridays at 10 a.m., Philip Daigle uh, and uh, Trent Oster are always really good at talking about the updates, taking questions, and giving away some free stuff, as well as throwing some shade at Nathan Stewart, our brand director here at Dungeons & Dragons. That's all I'm going to say, but you got to check out their last stream if you want to know what I'm talking about. Um, what else? So, right. Uh, the black mugs with the red D&D ampersands. I know, they're so cool. I don't even have any more of them available to us. I think Nathan gave away the last one that I was kind of saving in, in the office during one of his fireside uh, chats. There's no mas, but I can say we are going to be making more better D&D ampersand mugs out there. Maybe with the ampersand on both sides. What? Can you believe that? It's crazy ampersands all around. You can hold it with your left hand. You can hold it with your right hand. It doesn't matter. Everyone will love the ampersand and it'll be in your business, uh, which is good. Uh, so we're working on that. We're also working on uh, water bottles as well uh, and uh, a lot of other fun swag, including stuff uh, that has dice camera action on it. So we're working on all those fun things and I, this will be one of the first places you hear about it because there's nothing that I like to do more than showing off physical product uh, as it comes in. And speaking of which, Mm. These have been out here for a while, um, but I wanted to, we got some uh, notice from folks that they don't necessarily know what they look like before they open them, so here's a way for you to check them out. These are the Dungeon Tiles Reincarnated 
uh, updated with uh, you know kind of the fifth edition trade dress, but they use a lot of the same artwork that was in the original dungeon tiles that came out for fourth edition. So uh, this is the actual outer packaging. This is what the box looks like. Uh, it has a grid on it, even uh, on the box itself. So if you want to use it for levels, you totally can use this cardboard box for it. This is the Wilderness set. It comes in three sets, City, Wilderness, and Dungeon. Um, so yeah, I just want to pop these open a little bit. I didn't actually pop them out of each individual um, uh, sheet, but I wanted to kind of have you guys be able to look at them uh, in a way that makes sense. Uh, yeah, there you go. I like to keep my eyes over there, so it looks creepy when I go like this. Um, but they are double-sided. Uh, they are able to uh, accept wet and dry erase, I believe, uh, although not uh, not necessarily guaranteed um, on either of those. But you know, here there's here's some tents on this side, and then the other side uh, had uh, some some ruins as well as some ways to get into uh, what's happening in the dungeon below. Here is a ravine as well as a clearing. Uh, and then on this side, it has a river as well as uh, some, some tents and a little bit of a uh, camp that you might be able to run an encounter in. Um, yeah, so tons of different scenarios, things that you can use in your game uh, if, you're not, if you don't want to draw them out on your own. Uh, on uh, wet, wet and dry erase stuff. You can use minis. They all have a nice grid that doesn't kind of take over the art, which I like uh, because, you know, a lot with a grid, you'll end up just seeing the, the squares, uh, but these grids are, you know, they're like little uh, hashtags, so you can kind of still count five-foot squares in that way. Um, and uh, these are... Are pretty cool. Oh, and this one's got this one's got like an internal building that you can use. So they're super versatile. Again, they're double sided, so they try to use up as much of the cardboard as you can. Uh, I think the cardboard is is high quality. Uh, they are uh, you know kind of board game board thickness right there, which I think is great. Um, and yeah, a lot of uh, different waterways, docks, bridges, things that you can use in your game in any way. Um, that I think uh, will enhance. Oh, and then this one even has, they have some things that aren't temperate zones here, some more desert type tiles. I'm trying to get the glare off, there we go. Uh, some more desert tiles, some oasis uh, things going on. Um, and I like that they updated the, the tent styles uh, for, for the oasis type thing that's going on as well. Uh, love it, love it or leave it. <laughs> cool, oh, this one's got like a little boat, like a little catamaran boat thing there. Uh, which it's always handy when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons. You're like, you're on a boat. What does it look like? It looks like this. Uh, well, there you go. And then, of course, it got some water in case you wanted to just throw some water up in there. So, great. Uh, that's what these look like. These are available in your local game store. Um, they are published by D&D uh, &D itself, uh, so they should be pretty well in stock uh, and whenever you need them. Uh, look, looks like I popped that one. This one's got like a big crater in it, which I think is cool. Uh, and it also has the denotion for being difficult terrain. I believe that's what that, uh, that triangle means, is that there's difficult terrain on there too. So they try to keep, you know, keep everything in mind. And again, these were super popular in the fourth edition days, and we basically just updated these tiles for, uh, for, for those of you. So it kind of all feels like it's in the same vein of everything that we're producing for fifth edition. So cool, go check these out. I'll be showing you the other tiles, uh, the both city and dungeon tiles over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so come check those out if you're interested in all of that. So how are you guys all doing? I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. So I will more show you what's going to be going on on this D&D channel in the next little while. Uh, tonight, of course, we have at 4 p.m. Dice Camera Action starting in just about nine minutes. Uh, Chris Perkins is over in the other studio right now getting everybody all up to speed about what's going to be happening on that channel. Then uh, tomorrow we have Miss Click's D&D Risen starting at 4 p.m. Pacific Time. Uh, and then at 6 p.m. Pacific Time, Maze Arcana Fury's Fate, their final episode, will be showing at 6 p.m. Pacific Time. That's right. Uh, don't, don't miss the last episode of what's been going on with uh, Dungeon Master Rudy Rudenberg, uh, Dodger, Sig Neutron, Kyle Vogt, Kyle Omega, Alex Gross, and Kim Horcher. Uh, it's been a fantastic cast. We've loved the story that they've told so far, and uh, we are in, uh, you know, we're getting excited for what we're going to do together in 2018. So good stuff. Um, Thursday, I mentioned uh, Codename uh, Critical Entertainment. I mean, sorry. Codename Critical Entertainment. 
that doesn't even make any sense. Uh, Codename Entertainment's Idol Champions uh, will be going on Thursday, and then of course we host Critical Role here on the Dungeons & Dragons channel. I mentioned this during Dragon Talk yesterday, but it's important to note now that they are starting up their new campaign, there are their chat window uh, for Critical Role and Matt and uh, Marcia and all the fun folks down there. Uh, gets a little bit busy. There is a lot of chat going on, blank, 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 blank. Uh, so come to our channel where we're hosting and uh, we will be uh, able to have a more of a chat uh, communication back and forth while what's going on on Thursday. What's up, Chris? <laughs> uh, we're getting all ready to set, uh, set up what's going over there in just a couple minutes. Um, but uh, the last thing I wanted to let you know is that uh, Beam Dog again is hosting on Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, and then as well we have Tales from a Candle keep going at 12 noon. And then Roll20 presents Tomb of Annihilation with Dungeon Master Adam Koble. We'll be heading uh, at 1 p.m. The Dragon Friends have returned. If you guys haven't seen their show, they're super fun. They're Australian uh, improv comedians. They do it in more of a live setting with microphones, uh, definitely from a more comedy background. Not quite your serious Tomb of Annihilation play, but tons of fun. I suggest you have fun with them on Friday nights. It's perfect for that. And then on Saturday, Encounter Role Plays Learn by Play series is coming back uh, this uh, Saturday at 3 p.m. Pacific time to 6 p.m. Eastern time. So check out Will Jones and the rest of his crew there as he tries to let you know about why he's doing the dungeon mastering things that he's doing. Uh, so it's super fun, worthwhile. Uh, if you're interested in finding out more about dungeon mastering, uh, from someone who's been doing it for a long time. Go check that out uh, again th Saturday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, I saw someone in here mention uh, this chat, and I'm sorry I won't be able to call you up by name, but uh, mentioned the Spanish language uh, player's handbooks. Those are available, I believe, in uh, you know different territories right now, but we're working on ways to get those uh, in hardcover uh, for uh, those who live in actually Spain. Uh, so that is in the works. Just want to let you know I don't have any dates uh, or any firm plans uh, as far as when that's happening. But we do we are aware that there is demand, and uh, you know we're we're figuring out ways to include more people who play Dungeons and Dragons not using English as their first language. There is opportunity for us to showcase all kinds of different. Dungeons and Dragons from different backgrounds uh, with different people, and I think that's a fine way to do it. So uh, if you have any suggestions for that, uh, for folks you know who are playing using uh, the translations that are making their rounds uh, from Gale Force 9, uh, or are just using the English language uh, uh, handbooks and, and other things that we've produced, and then translating it and playing in their own language, that's really fascinating to me, uh, and I'd love to at least find out more about how they play and what they're doing, as well as what events we can possibly support, and uh, maybe get them on Dragon Talk to talk a little bit more in depth about what they're doing. Uh, we, uh, I made a call a little while ago on Twitter uh, about trying to find out more guests for 2018, and this is definitely one of the things that I think is super fun to find out more about. Uh, so. Let me know. Follow me on Twitter. I'm at Greg Tito. Uh, I'm also on Instagram. I'm Greg underscore Tito there. Uh, so if you have any visual stuff uh, or interested in what's going on here in the office, sometimes I post pictures of stuff you can't really get or see anywhere else on that. Uh, so please follow me there. Uh, and uh, yeah, either, either message me or direct message me uh, and we'll figure out a way to work on uh, getting more and different people here uh, highlighted on the D&D Twitch channel, which is what it is all about. Cool. How are you guys doing uh, here uh, in the chat? Uh, preemptive Chris Y. That was probably that was probably good. That was probably a good idea. Why? Why? Uh, Greg, do you know how updated the publicized books are for Errata? The, you mean the published books? Uh, so we are only able to do that when there is specific printings going on. Uh, so oh, and it looks like I'm I'm now connected. I think. Um, so when those uh, uh, um, when there is a new printing is when we were able to kind of put in uh, some of the e errata and stuff that has been on there. So it depends. Um, some of it may be, you know, the, the, the problem with that is that there might be some stuff in stores that have, uh, you know, older uh, inventory that may not be updated on time. Uh, so you kind of have to check. Uh, and I believe there is an article on the Dungeons and Dragons website which points you to that. But eventually, most of the, and, and it's not the errata, the things that we've naturally changed, but things like typos, things that were uh, misworded uh, in, a, in a way, uh, those are the things that get corrected with the printings. Uh, but I would suggest looking at, if you're interested in errata, uh, check out the uh, Dungeons and Dragons website. There is, I believe, articles on that there. Okay. 
You guys have questions. You have all of them. Poor, uh, Pelham has been pulled away to try and do some other stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here to continue doing this forever and ever if you want. So what you got? Oh, thank you, Scary Green Mountain. That was a very nice thing to say. Thank you for that. Uh, Greg for DCA guest. Oh, that's sweet. I've been actually thinking about um, doing uh, another dungeon mastering stint here on the D&D Twitch channel, kind of formulating what I'm going to do. Uh, I did an Out of the Abyss campaign back in 2015 that is near and dear to my heart. It was about two years ago, almost to the day, uh, that we uh, closed that out. So um, part of me actually has been thinking about bringing back some of the members of that team and going back into the abyss, uh, or back into the Underdark, rather, and kind of finishing uh, where, where they left off. We only did about half of the campaign where they uh, got up to the surface. That was like the end. Uh, but there's a whole other part of Out of the Abyss where they go back in and try to deal with what's happening with the Demon Lords down in the Underdark. That's interesting to me. Uh, or maybe just use some of those characters and move on to something else. But there is a lot that we can do with what's going on there for sure. And yes, I would love to get Alyssa, who is now uh, producing for the Acquisitions Incorporated C team. Um, there's got to be some 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 convergence there. She just has to drive, you know, about 30 minutes south to get here in our offices. Or maybe we go up there. I don't know. Crazy stuff. There's a lot of possibilities. But I would love to, because Ruki, her monk, was a big part of that, as well as uh, uh, you know, all, all the amazing cast members there. Uh, I, don't, I was going to call them out by name, but then I figured I would get them wrong because uh, I don't have any of that info in front of me. But good stuff. Uh, Monty Beth, you are welcome to recruit me for that game. All right, you're in. Come on down. <laughs> I don't know who you are or where you are, uh, but you're in. Uh, uh, and uh, you're using your, your, your handle there for sure. Uh, Green Flame, people don't use that emote enough. You're right, there should be more green flame out there. Uh, Helob, yeah, I know, right? Helob is life. Helob is life. I hope he's okay. He did end up, we went through great pains not to kill off that dang spider uh, in the Out of the Abyss campaign. If you guys already know what we're talking about, look on our YouTube channel. It's probably the best place to look at it right now. Uh, it's called Out of the Abyss Live. Uh, but Ruki, uh, Alyssa's character, the monk, uh, she rolled randomly on the things that she was able to get to start the campaign, and she got a spider. And she latched onto it, and it became like her kind of uh, pet, uh, one of the mascots of that entire campaign, in addition to Stool, uh, which was uh, played sometimes uh, by, by Trevor Kidd uh, here in the D&D offices. He was a Myconid sprout. Didn't have a lot to say, necessarily, but when he did, whew, he was important. But poor, poor, st well, I don't, I don't want to spoil it for you, uh, but you can probably tell just from my tone that Stool is a, is a poor little Myconid. Poor little guy. Oh, that first that first uh, episode is rough to listen to, but we get a little bit better with the uh, with the Out of the Abyss as it goes on. It's kind of interesting too because that was like our first, not our first, but the, you know, it, it was it was kind of the flagship for us doing this stuff on Twitch uh, here, and it has continued more and more going forward. So. Pelham is back. I can finally stop talking to you over and over and over again. Thanks so much. I'm sure he's getting everything ready for Chris to start up in just one minute. Uh, so I'm going to get off of here and uh, let you guys go watch some awesome Dice Camera action. Please support all of them. Give them all the emotes they need. Make things happen. It is awesome. Good to see you guys. We'll talk to you soon. And uh, happy adventuring, folks.